down here. Good afternoon once again. This uh, gentleman next to me is Denon Lewis. Denon, good afternoon. Welcome to CWS as it is. How are you? I'm fine, Salvin. Good afternoon to you. Uh, good, night. good afternoon to all the viewers out there. Uh, really excited to be here once again. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to really connect and, and to share. Mm -hmm. Co-founder of Privilege, winner of Scotia Banks, live, or is it live, uh, live I pitch, live pitch business yes. competition in 2016. Uh, passionate for youth development, Franklin Covey, general manager, et cetera, et cetera. Then, uh, <laughs> thank you for taking the time to speak with me. And, and how do you describe yourself? Who is uh, Denon? How do you describe yourself? Well, it comes in more than one ways. Uh, Denon can be the, the guy that you uh, reach out to when you need advice, whether it's business, whether it's life. Uh, with its guidance. I'm also the guy that's very passionate for um, entrepreneurship, as, as, you, as you read just now, about your development, and really as it relates to success. That, that's the journey that I'm on, and that's the journey that I encourage everyone around me to, to join, just the journey to success. I find myself this afternoon, I'm glad you mentioned advice and guidance, asking each and every one of you this question. Mm -hmm. And simply because there's been an echo um, sentiment reverberating in Guyana for the past few years about young people not getting the support they need and people not noticing them and this and that. But here you are, a leader in your own right, an entrepreneur, you're successful. Let's, let's say I am one of those young people. What do I need to do? Look, it's one of the things we always say. It's Never about your resources, but how resourceful you can be. It's what we say at the Masterclass Institute. It's what we tell every one of our attendees. And it all comes down to identifying and realizing that there's, there, are, there, are, there are opportunities rather uh, at various places right here locally. And um, it's just to be in that network, just to use Google, for example, and, and see what's going on locally so that you can better equip yourself to benefit from the opportunities that are there. And apart from the local opportunities, we, we often say because of the internet, the world is now your backyard. So if you're not in the know as it relates to what you could do locally, then there's tons of things that you could do on the internet. There's tons of jobs that you can log into at any given time of day and become successful just by doing those. How did you discover that? Well, well how, how then, yeah. <laughs> I am a product of the Masterclass Institute. It's what um, what got me into privilege, which is the coding business that I'm a part of. I did have um, one or two businesses before that, but it really it really shed light on perspective as it relates to systems, as it relates to how to be tactical as uh, when it comes to doing business, and not just uh, as we often see in Guyana. Uh, you have all the, well, you think you have all the knowledge to start the business and you don't start without literally doing your MVP, which is your minimum viable product, and getting it out there to see whether or not persons are really going to spend, really going to buy what it is that you're, you're selling. Let's talk about privilege for a second. You mentioned it's, uh -huh. it's a coding, what is it, a coding? Uh... Yeah, it's a, it's a coding brand. Uh, it's, it's been, it has been evolving as, as we progress. What, what really got it started is just identifying a need. Um, as we learned in the masterclass, we, we call it the putting on your entrepreneurial glasses. Mm -hmm. And it's to see the opportunities that are available right around you in your neighborhood, in your community, uh, in your region, right? And uh, it was around the 50th anniversary period. And we literally realized that everyone was doing t-shirts, everyone was doing jerseys and whatnot. But all they were doing is taking the 50th anniversary logo, slap it on a t-shirt and put a name on it or a tag on it. And that's what they were selling. So in, in my view, they weren't being as creative as they could have been uh, for the 50th. That, that's not what persons want. Persons want something that has a bit more meaning uh, to me uh, than just the logo. So what we did is we took the logo. Yes, we took concepts around the actual, um, the actual scene or the actual um, period or season and we created about 10 variations of our uh, designs and before we actually went and print this stuff we put it out on Facebook uh, we got persons to say yes I'm interested 
We even went as far as having persons make pre-orders where they, where they paid about 50% of the cost. And we, we did about 300 of those within about 10 days. Pause for a second, Denon. So you've made yeah. these, these action steps which were valuable. Yes. But here's the question I believe on lots of people's minds. Why? Why do you think those action steps were necessary? But, well, again, it comes back to having knowledge, right? So mm -hmm. you, you identify um, an opportunity. You, you identify an issue. That's the first thing. Because um, no one's going to buy if there's not a need for it, if there's not a demand for it. Mm -hmm. So after identifying what's needed, uh, you check to see what's working and what isn't. And then you look to see ways in which you can capitalize on what isn't working. And you basically do your MVP. You get the model out there to say, hey, world, this is what I am about. This is what I'm offering. Will this be something that you'd want to spend your money on? And based on the returns, based on the feedback you get from there, you go into phase two, phase three, which is actual production, which is actual distribution. Because uh, I believe as well, dependent on the business that you want to do, you don't necessarily in this day and age need a physical storefront. Because even presently, Privilege has never had a physical space. We distribute to uh, various um, clothing stores uh, locally, and they're the ones that usually get our products out there. I, I want to go back to what you said earlier about putting it out there and asking people. Um, yeah. There is this fear among young entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs um, that if I put my idea out there, somebody's going to steal it. Yeah. What do you, what yeah. do you, how do you advise someone to get rid of that fear or doubt. Yeah, it, it's funny because um, a lot of persons indeed think that way. But one of the things we've realized is we live in a world of over 6 billion people. So chances are the idea that you think is so smart and so special and unique, there's at least 100 or 1,000 people out there with the exact same or just variations to the exact same thing. How many of us uh, from time to time would have seen an invention, would have seen someone start a business and go, I had the exact same idea. So it's never about the idea, but how fast you can execute on that idea. So getting it out there is to say, yes, this is what I'm doing. And even if, um, of course, you put your stuff out there, but you don't give away your secret sauce, right? It's, there's a difference between putting what you're doing and putting how you're doing what you're doing. That, thanks for clarifying that. Uh -huh. So it's not, it's not the idea, but it's the execution. Yes, it's all mm -hmm. about the execution. You obviously have a passion for sales and entrepreneurship. Yeah. How, how, how do you think this developed? Um, well, well, as um, I was asked this question recently, and I realized that uh, without actually noticing it, it, it happened way back. I, I could give uh, accounts as early as uh, forms one and two in, in secondary school, where uh, I would um, buy and sell trading cards uh, based on value, based on demand, based on uh, needs, right? Uh, based on the various niches that, that I understood. Uh, I came from the business stream and of all the subjects that I did, this was the one that, that I was always most passionate about. Uh, and um, mainly because it gives you the opportunity to literally be your own boss, right? It gives you the opportunity to make as much as you can possibly make. Because being in sales, uh, means how much input you, you, you uh, have into this product, how much input you have into this process, that determines how much output that you, you actually get. So the more you do, the more you get. And having that as opposed to, and, and um, I'm not saying that um, doing or, or not being an entrepreneur, not being in business uh, isn't the way to go, but for a lot of people, and for myself personally, uh, I think that really being in that way and, and being independent enough to say that I can make $500,000 this month if I really wanted to, because I have all the, the, um, the processes, I have all the systems in place to do so, is really a nice thing to say. You know, on that note, for those who have all these things that, you, you, you know, all these tools and so on, and uh -huh. are, are not doing it, what, what would you say to them? Well, well, again, um, forgive me for using so much of the masterclass material because that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm just reeking with it. But we often say that imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. A lot of times, people say, "Okay, I have this, but I'm just waiting on. I have 90% of the things that I actually need." 
but I'm just waiting on the 10%. Once I have that 10%, I'm going to start. It's going to be successful. But more often than not, that 10% isn't going to come tomorrow, isn't going to come next week, it's not going to come next year. So why not act with the 90% that you have so that you have some success, you have that small victory that leads to that major victory instead of just waiting on that 10%, not knowing when that 10% is going to come. You won the Scotiabank competition. Uh -huh. um, how competitive is that or was that? And why do you think you won that one? Oh, but in terms of competition, um, it, it was very competitive because uh, one of the things Scotiabank did immediately is uh, you had the, the virtual voting, which is on social media, on Facebook. You had persons had to like your video uh, in order to, to vote for it, basically. And we saw some pretty interesting things there, actually. <laughs> but uh, as it relates to what, what uh, would have made us stand out, it was two things. It had to do with presentation, of course. Uh, and I always say this to folks, once you're selling a product, once you're, you're in service, you, presentation always comes, right? Um, and so the video production, what we had to see in terms of what we would have already accomplished, because a lot of persons, as, especially when you look at investors, they want to invest something, invest in something that's either already out there or has, or is a no brainer as it relates to the potential that it has. So given that we would have already been about uh, what, four or six months in business. And during that period, already did 300 pre-orders, um, already in the distribution business with the Giftland Mall, which is one of the go-to places uh, in the country for anything, right? Um, really having that level of success very early up and that together with, with us completing our life pitch or, or um, business plan right here that they, that they would have asked us to do, with our projections, seeing what we would have, what we intended to do in the following years, I think that really made us the the, the well, us really setting the bar as it relates to what they're looking for in business and what they're looking for for startups in particular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and what kind of impact winning had on you personally? What's going through your mind when you you, you know it was um, you found out that you won? Well. To be honest, uh, immediately it, it was, it's like a part of me because of the amount of work that we, that we would have put in. Mm -hmm. And of course, knowing who your competitors are, because in business, it's always good to know that the, who are the other persons that are occupying the same space. Uh, we don't often refer to them as even competitors. We're just all com contributors to the same cause, right? Oh, 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 so, hold on a second. Yeah. I, this is very profound. I want you to repeat that. You don't yeah, consider you don't consider the other players as competitors. No, we're we're just contributors. We're <laughs> all towards the same cause. We're all looking to grow businesses. We're all looking to become successful. So understanding, having that mindset or that paradigm shift to say that um, you're you're all a part of this one big purpose. It, it really refocuses you to be way more effective and contribute even with the amount of the individuals that are there. Then on why are why are you so bright in, in entrepreneurship? Um, I, I guess it comes with, with just being in it. it. Again, one of the things you say in the masterclass, the best way to succeed in business is to just be in business. So oh my gosh. Deal with. Give, yeah. give us some tips. Give us some tips for increasing sales in the fashion industry. Oh, well, great, great question. Um, one, be unique, of course, with your design, with your designs, be creative as possible but not just be creative because some of the pieces that uh, we often see, it's not something that the average person would, would want to wear or would buy. So one is to know your market. You can start from there because you want to have that creativity, but you all, you'll also need to know who you're marketing to, right? So know your audience, have three, four, five avatars of the individuals that you want to sell to, who are your ideal customers, more or less, right? Once you have that, and you have your, your crazy ideas that you know are going to work, then you start strategically targeting. You can use social media. I love um, social media for the fact that you can hyper-target and um, you can target based on demographics as well as psychographics of the individual. I'm sure Roche is going to give a ton of information on this. Uh, but really understanding that you can literally target individuals based on preference, based on 
their psyche. And that really helps you in terms of your sales, your sales process. Also, one of the things that a lot of persons don't realize is the importance of data, the importance of information, right? Having persons who would have done business with you before, having their contact information, their name, their email address, their cell phone number, it's way easier to retarget them to say in the next three months or in the next four months that, hey, uh, I'm bringing a few new lines or a few new things that you might be interested in because one, you already have rapport with that individual. Two, they already would have purchased from you, which means there's already buyer intent. And three, you already have some data sets and preferences as it relates to what they like and what they don't like. So collecting that information, creating a database of all the persons that you would have done business with before really secures you as it relates to predictability uh, which is what we call the most important P as it relates to the business. Um, then on, I yeah. don't want to, at the risk of dating myself, my generation and older, you know, we suffer from a, 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 a thing that we're, if, if, if we approach people mm -hmm. often or, you know, just approach them more, you know, several times or so, and we consider it as bothering them. Your generation yeah. doesn't seem to have that problem or that issue at all. You know, here you are, you are articulating it in a very um, profound, you know, business concept. You know, you get the data and then you approach them and you tell them that, you know, I'm, I'm having this and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, why you think, well, how do you address that? If, if, if you were lecturing my generation and all that, yeah. that are suffering from that, what would you say to us? It's, it's pretty simple, but it's often overlooked. And it's to one, everyone likes to know, everyone likes deals, right? That, that's how, that's your window or your, your way in. So you tie collecting information with a special, with an offer, with a free um, gift card, so to speak, right? And the information you collect, apart from just general, uh, should be something like, of course, uh, you would see sites collecting, um, your, your date of birth, for example. So you drop reminders around the person's birthday to say, hey, we realize that you have a birthday coming up. And um, these are some of the things that we thought you might be interested in. Of course, you can visit us, give us a call to let us know uh, if you're really interested in this. You have some special around that as well. Uh, another thing to do is to, you don't want to bombard. No one likes to be attacked as it relates to sales, right? So. You, you try as much as possible to, again, know your, your audience and you target based on that audience. So if you're gonna, for example, if you're gonna be selling clothing, if you're doing clothing, don't uh, necessarily show one image, one text over and over to the same audience. They're gonna go blind, by, blinded by that, right? They're not gonna even see it after the third, fourth, fifth time. So what you need to do is to have a variety. If you have a, a particular ad that you're running or a particular collection, you break it up into four or five pieces. So today they're seeing shirts, tomorrow they're seeing dresses, the other day they're seeing watches. So it's it's never this one thing that's just in your face all the time. It's always something new, always something fresh. From so in other scene. words, you can't be lazy as an entrepreneur. Yes, you can't. You, you gotta put in the work. <laughs> you gotta put in the work. Yeah. What, what, what do you hope other young people listening to this conversation this afternoon? What do you hope, what are two or three things you hope they take away from this conversation? Well, well one, uh, of course, um, know your start, right? If you, if you don't know um, what you need to know as it relates to business, just seek help. There, there are tons of places all around. There's tons of resources. I mean, even on Google, like we always say, uh, there's Guru Google, right? Just Google some stuff and um, get some knowledge as much as possible. Get into industries that you have information on, right? Or if you don't, then connect. I, I'm a big, I'm very, very big on networking, right? This, this is what got me started as well. So if you don't know, but you're good in a particular area, for me, I'm good in sales. So what I did is I connected with people that that's good in fashion or that's good in designing. I didn't design any of the designs that were out there, right? I made the connections, but I, I connected with people who have that resource or have that talent that we can all learn from. So whether it's uh, in the form of business training or business coaching, whether it's in the form of connecting with those individuals that are around you that have certain skill sets and talents, uh, really understand that aspect. And, and two, 
uh, one of my one of my go to uh, guys right now is is Mark Cuban, and he says uh, sales secures all. So if you're already in business and um, you're wondering about the systems, you're wondering about your employees, you're wondering about so many other issues that you have, just work out a way to increase your sales. Mm. Because once you increase revenue, then you have more money to invest in bringing in a consultant to deal with something or bringing in a trainer to deal with customer relations or customer service. But if you don't have sales, that's, that's the blood flow of your organization, that's the blood flow of your company. If you don't have sales, then you won't have the ability or the capacity to deal with all the other issues that you have in business. So I think those are those are those are some major takeaways uh, as as it relates to success as well in terms of competition. Don't be afraid to join or, or to be a part of various uh, business competitions. Showcase your idea, and of course, always go through your MVP, your minimum viable product. Get it out there on the various platforms. Have persons. Uh, both with their wallets, as we would say at the Masterclass Institute, and don't ever invest in your business alone. Get others to invest as well by buying or doing pre-orders from you. What is one thing? Uh huh. I know there are many. This might be an unfair question. Perhaps it is. <laughs> but what is one thing you have learned, Masterclass, whatever class, Google Guru, whatever? Yeah. <laughs> one particular thing you can say that. If this is the one thing I have to hold on to, if I'm in a ship and it is sinking, what would that one thing be then? One thing I've learned, I, I would say it, it has to do with business as, it, as, it, as itself, right? Mm -hmm. And it's never settle on mm -hmm. the wins that you have today, right? Because even in business, making, making a profit isn't an achievement in business. It's an obligation. If you're, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to be a business owner, your obligation is to make profit. So don't throw a party because you made a uh, $100,000 profit or a million dollars profit. That's what you're supposed to do. So, of course, be appreciative of your wins, but always plan your next step. Always plan on what's going to be the, the phase two, phase three, phase five of your business. And I think that's the, the major thing I've learned so far uh, in business. What is your next step? Well, well, my my next steps, I should say, is uh, um, if I can just give a general overview because sure. there's so many. Sure. Sure. Is to is to become a serial entrepreneur, because there's so many other fields, there's so many uh, opportunities and possibilities, uh, both locally and internationally, and um, I'm just going to be capitalizing on all that I that I can and uh, multiplying myself over and over uh, as much as I can to become that serial entrepreneur. Serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Yes. How can, for these young people, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question I'm asking everybody. Uh -huh. Young people complaining about the status quo, or some of them, and not getting the, the kind of assistance they need and so on. Um, I know you answer this. You answer this question in a yeah. different way, but I I, I want to pick your brain. I yes. want to pick your brain. I really want to pick your brain. Um, a group of them have started. There is some amount of success, uh -huh. but it seem to be a standstill. Um, they feel that without outside help, financially, they yeah. can't make yeah. it. Yeah. But you see something differently. You're resourceful. You see another yes. way. What are you saying to this group? Look, look it's, it's very simple. It's to, one, understand your surroundings. Um, there are, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there are tons of opportunities out there locally. And I mean, from uh, if you want to look at outside support in a whole, right, there's uh, many of the government as well as non-government organizations that, that give grants and uh, have competitions that you can that you can be a part of, but apart from that, just start with your community. Just start within your um, your circle, right? Especially if the good or service that you're you're planning to provide um, is a need within that within your circle within your community. Start as I said, start with the small wins. Everyone thinks that um, it, it's a funny thing as it relates to overnight success because everyone sees. Um, a guy that 
uh, th throws up a big building or um, talks about this large deal that he closed and said, oh, that's an overnight success story. But no one saw the five, 10, six, three years of work that would have went into that one moment, mm -hmm. right? So it's really just uh, sticking to it, being persistent, and um, yeah, building on your small wins. Building on your small wins. Building on your small wins. Mm -hmm. If you had the ear of the minister of business, let's yeah. go. Let's go further. And the president. Yes. Well, we could go further. And the minister of telecommunication and education. Mm -hmm. So you have four of them in the room, right? Uh huh. The president, minister of business, telecommunication, education. And they ask you to tell them three things. What would you be saying? Okay, one, I would say, um, wow, this is, gotta be careful with this one. One, I would say, um, understand, really, really understand the, the demographics of the country. I mean, um, we were talking just earlier this week about 70% of Guyana's population being uh, the, the 40 and under, right? 40 year olds and under. And um, that says a lot as it relates to where we are as a nation. Uh, this is probably the advice to the president, where we, are, where we are as a nation and where we should be in the next three years, five years, 10 years from now. Uh, and, and that will help in terms of planning. As it relates to uh, the Minister of Education and um, Public Telecommunications, uh, I would say, look at the, the models that we would have we would have ran uh, with the, the Digital Wealth Creation Summit, with what we would have done with, with some of our with some of our programs, which is to show or or to showcase to individuals the opportunities of online businesses, of, of online service, so to speak, where you can um, essentially be at home. Uh, and, and being a virtual assistant for someone that's living in New York, someone that's living in Europe, right? Where you can be at home and provide uh, sales uh, services for companies all over the world, and they pay you through the various means and, and streams. I mean, uh, we have been talking a lot about bringing a few more popular um, payment plans or payment methods to Guyana, but in the in the interim, there's so many other ways of still getting money in. Even myself, I have been uh, on Upwork, and I would have worked with uh, international companies um, in various areas as it relates to sales and as it relates to getting them clients and being paid. Right? As it relates to business, I I believe uh, what what might be needed uh, is a bit more uh, incubators to help individuals to understand the, the earliest stages of business, not necessarily from a funding perspective, because if you don't understand business, then if I give you a million dollars and tell you turn it into $5 million in three years or one year, you wouldn't know how to do that. So you first need to understand the concepts, the, the foundation of business, what makes it work, what understanding money, because I think that's still a fundamental uh, issue in Guyana, just financial literacy. So uh, three things. One, understand the demographics of the country. Uh, two, pay attention to the international world where we're moving to in terms of job, uh, job security or job certification or even jobs in the whole. And uh, three, uh, create more uh, foundation type um, incubators to help individuals who are saying or who raises, raises their hand to say, yes, I want to be in business but might not yet have the total know-how and foundation that's necessary to be called an entrepreneur. Then I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot again. I am uh -huh. constantly trying to encourage my peers, my mm -hmm. generation older, about empowering and encouraging young people in Guyana. But I think you can, your generation can make a better case. What, what are we missing about your population? I think um, that, that's pretty interesting as well. I think um, we're just operating on different operating systems. Uh, and this is me pulling watch from it, France. Watch it, Denon. <laughs> be gentle. Yeah. I said be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, this is me pulling from France and copy here. And um, remember, our, our generation is uh, the millennials going forward. Right, so we we see things a lot differently, 
uh, from um, the baby boomers or the folk that would have been there before us. So the way we talk, the way our paradigms are, it's totally different from the way uh, individuals from your generation operate and see things. Uh, we could be looking at the same number and you're calling it a six and I'm calling it a nine. And we're both right, but we would never see things through each other's eyes unless we bridge that gap. Mm. So I think it, it has to be uh, what's missing or what you're lacking is a two-way street of us understanding those before us and you understanding um, you understanding uh, us as well. Janan, thank you very much. All right. And um, uh, just to stick in a, a bit more to that, um, from Franklin Covey, uh, we have something uh, called the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'm sure you've heard about it. And Habit 5 talks about seeking first to understand before being understood. And I think that's so fundamental and important um, for, for both parties, really. One, in, in any engagement, is to understand the individual, their point of view, their perspective, where they're coming from, and then seek to respectfully be understood. And um, asking that person to really listen with the intent to understand what you're actually saying to them. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for having me. I'm looking forward to uh, many more engagements like this, and I hope that what I would have said would have inspired uh, all of your listeners uh, out there. You're definitely coming back at some point. <laughs> definitely. Tell Roche I'll send him a new meeting ID. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you.